change is a seed buried somewhere beneath our passion and our purpose. It takes root in our spirit, sprouting throughout our veins, pumping through every heartbeat. God is doing a new thing at Mesa Church, and we are ready to make his vision for us a reality. As our church continues to grow in the culture of generosity, we are simultaneously launching ourselves into the next chapter of ministry God has for us. We understand the value and mission of the local church, and we stand ready to embrace this now opportunity. Our response is the NOW initiative, a two-year-long journey that we will make together. This will require us to individually and collectively seek and depend on the Lord like never before. Each of us will need to examine what sacrifices we can make and bring those sacrifices before the Lord as one body. We are called to make an impact, and the time is now. Hey everyone, Pastor Jordan here. Hey, uh, this week uh, life happened and Tara actually, uh, she got sick. And so uh, she tested positive for COVID this last Tuesday. So we're all under quarantine and uh, yours truly is playing Mr. Mom. That's right, Harper can't go to school. So I'm taking care of a five-year-old and a three-year-old, loving every minute of it. So you can continue to pray for Tara to get better. She is on the mend. And I'm just praying that uh, this next Sunday I'll be back with you. And if everything goes well, I'll be back. So i um, grateful for Pastor Pete, though, this morning. He's going to give a great word on this concept of generosity, the language of God, God giving first, giving abundantly, giving extravagantly, and just the invitation that we have to join him in that. Hey, we're going to have a great Sunday today. I look forward to seeing you next week. Amen. Amen. Hey, what's going on, Mesa? How are you guys? Yeah, awesome. Let there be light. Uh, yeah, what a what an amazing day today, a, a special opportunity for us to gather and uh, to get into his word. Uh, once again, I uh, love Pastor Jordan and Tara and just continue to just pray for them and their family as they're in quarantining and all those different things. But uh, today we're jumping in right back into week three of our now generosity initiative. And so the past couple of weeks, right, Pastor Jordan has really been sharing from his heart about the vision and the mission. And last week we even talked about what does it mean to just simply trust, to simply trust. And as we've gone through this now initiative, right, for most of you guys, you should have gotten this book. I want to encourage you guys, once again, you can have this booklet, bring it uh, the next couple of weeks here, even today. You can go ahead and follow along. You can fill out your notes, take notes today. I've got several passages that I'm going to uh, kind of breeze over and just really hit today as we dive into this week's message. But you see, as we've done this generosity initiative, as we've titled it now, we pulled it from Isaiah 43, verse 19, where it says this, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The two things that really stick out to me is that is that God is doing a new thing. As for those of us who have called Mesa Church their home for a while, this is a new season for us. What God is doing in Mesa is a new thing. But the one thing that I want for us to really see is that in that very first part of this verse, it says, see, I am. So in order to recognize that God is actually doing something, we have to open our eyes, whether it be physically or we have to say spiritually, God, would you help me to see? you doing a new thing so that I can be a part of it. See, I've titled my message today, Giving is Living. I want you to tell your neighbor, why don't you give them a little nudge and say, I haven't gotten their coffee yet. I know the 845 was struggling this morning a little bit, but why don't you nudge your neighbor and say, giving is living. Come on, say, giving is living. All right. And we're going to be talking about generosity and what it means. Now, for those of you Right last week, last Sunday, we had the celebration because we got our permit. I don't know if any of you guys have driven down MacArthur and Red Hill past the Cowan property. If you have seen some new signage that has gone up, there's some fencing. The signs are there. It says, future home of Mesa Church. We are so pumped. We're excited. I know on Thursday, several of our team, a couple members of our team actually went to the property. Visioneering has been over there, and we've been getting materials. They're getting ready to actually prep the building so they can rip the roof off. Come on, somebody. Right? Woo! 
But man, what God is doing here at Mesa Church, what God is doing not just in the church building itself, but it's all about the people. And have we learned that so well, right? Giving is living. But what does it mean to be generous? What does it mean to be generous? Webster's would define it as showing a readiness to give more of something, showing kindness toward others. You know, if we look at our culture today and we think about generosity and we think about giving, we can see that a lot of us are very inclined and very drawn to movements, people, causes that really initiate what that means to be generous, to give, to love, to serve. Am I right? And so many people are, are drawn to it. Why? They're, they're, there's, there's something unique about it. There's something special about generosity. There's something special about giving. And then for all of us, I mean, I think we would all, we're only scratching the surface, though. We can look at all the opportunities. We can look at all that's being done. But in reality, it's scratching the surface if we're not connecting it to who started it all. You see, to be generous, it all comes from God himself. That is his heart his nature. You see, living generously begins with recognizing that our God is a generous God. Living generously, it begins with recognizing that our God is a generous God. See, living generously, guess what? It has nothing to do with what your income is. It has nothing to do with your income. You know, we had a bunch of the young adults and some of our teens and some of our students that were sitting here at our 845, and I told them, we all know what that felt like, right? Having nothing, amen? amen. It's definitely not about my income, especially, with, right, if you're a parent and you've got kids, we all know it's not the income. Living generously, it's not about the income, but it has everything to do with how you and I think. Living generously has everything to do with our mindset, with our thoughts. And so what I'm going to do is today is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read over several passages. Why don't you guys write down where they're from? And I want to encourage you guys to, to look into those later. But we're going to kind of go through those. And if you've got a neighbor that's sitting next to you that is taking some notes, feel free. You can cheat and look over and see just in case you get caught and behind. Is that cool? All right. You guys with me today? All right. Awesome. So here's the first passage, Psalm 100, verse 5, out of the message. Catch what it says. For the Lord is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and forever. Amen. Psalm 145, verse 16 says this. Generous to a fault, you lavish your favor on all creatures. This is reinforcing who? God's character, who he is. Romans 10, 11 through 13 out of the message says this. Scripture reassures us. No one who trusts God like this, heart and soul, will ever what? Regret it. It's exactly the same. No matter what a person's religious background may be, the same God for all of us acting in the same incredibly generous way to everyone who calls out for help. I love this. Everyone who calls help God gets help. That is the Lord that we serve. That is the God who cares about you and about me. Deuteronomy 15 verses 10 through 11 says, Give freely and spontaneously. Don't have a stingy heart. The way you handle matters like this triggers God. You're God's blessing in everything you do. All your work, your ventures, there are always going to be poor and needy people among you. So I command you, what does he say? Always be generous. Open purse and hands. Give to your neighbors in trouble, your poor and hurting neighbors. I love the very first part of this verse, right? We're in Deuteronomy 15, verse 10, where it says, give freely and spontaneously. The way that we handle matters like this triggers God. Have you ever had moments in your life where you felt triggered? All right. So most of the time when we hear that word, and especially in our culture today, when you hear that word about being triggered, it usually has kind of a negative connotation to it. 
You know, I can think a lot of, of a few things, a handful of things over this pandemic season that I have developed some triggers that haven't been the most healthiest, right? That haven't caused me to, out of the, the springs of my heart, to want to utter godly things. I'm just being real with you, right? I've been triggered in a lot of ways, and I, and I, and I guarantee, and I know that you have too. You know, but I, I, but I want us to think about this for a moment. When you look at this verse in Deuteronomy where it says to give freely and spontaneously, like to have spontaneity in your giving, right? To, to be ready, to be ready at a moment, at any instant, that it says there that it, God is triggered to do what only he can do. He's triggered. I mean, think about it this way for any of the parents in this room. Maybe you're watching online if you, and you're sitting <laughs> at home in your living room, and if you're probably like my wife who's at home right now, like, all these different things, like, and you've got the kids, right, and they're going crazy. You get triggered in the negative way, but then when your kids do something that is good, when your kids do something that is beautiful, you're like, oh, right? Maybe for those of you who are married in the room and your spouse does something that is very kind and thoughtful, you get triggered. You know, maybe, maybe uh, you're sitting, right, you're, you're, you've got certain situations, and, and you're, you're trying to get on the, the 405, We've all, we've all been triggered the wrong direction. But you're trying to get on the 405 and somebody actually lets you in. You're like, oh, blown away. You're triggered. See, giving is living. Generosity is the character of who God is. And when we begin to understand that as we give, we can really live, it triggers who God is because it's his character that he wants to raise up within you and I. See, there are different types of generosity. There's the open heart. And when we say open heart, it's all about having a desire to help others. A desire. The next type of generosity is having an open mind. Which means you're always thinking of ways to actually help. So one is having the desire, having the feelings, having, having the urge, and all of those different things. And then the other one is actually thinking about it and acting it out. So not just hearing it, not just thinking about it, but actually what? Going out and living it. So two forms, of, two types of generosity. See, in Isaiah verse 30, or chapter 32, verse 8, out of the New Living, it says this, but generous people, what? Plan, Plan to do what is generous. And then they stand firm in their generosity. Giving is living. We can't just think about it. We can't just have the desire. But there has to be an action that backs up the heart. What is actually being processed in our mind. That is what God desires for each of us. See, all of the fulfillment that you and I can have in life, all of the joy that we can receive, all of the happiness that we can acquire and all of those different things that we can feel all of it comes from giving all of it comes from sharing see i often ask myself when i go through each day who can i add value to who can i love today who can i serve who can i help who can i encourage who can i speak life into because we all know every single one of us depending on the day, depending on the time, depending on the hour, depending on the week, whatever it is, right? We all have moments where we can always use that. Having generosity. See, in your relationship with people, I've learned one thing. In your relationship with people, I've learned that you can either be a plus or you can be a minus. In your relationships with people, you can either be a plus or a minus. See, you're either living a generous life and you're adding value, or guess what? You're the opposite. Have you ever been around someone, and don't say any names or don't look at your neighbor, okay? I don't want to get you in trouble today. Have you ever been around or have you ever known someone who was a, what was called a life sucker? <laughs> so, see, I told you not to nudge your neighbor. I saw you over there, right? Like, 
I mean, I, I can think of moments where I've, I've been in the gatherings, I've gone, you know, gone and hung out with a group of friends, or, or uh, you know, we have, um, we have some community gatherings and some different things, and you, and you know, when you go out to hang out and you go out to socialize, a lot of times we go and we know, like, hey, I'm, I'm hoping to see certain people so that I can just spend time with them, have some quality time, all this different stuff, and we have those moments, but then... You're, you're, you're going through those moments, and this is me just being honest with you. I've had those moments where I've been talking, having a good conversation, and then out of the corner of my eye, I see that person. Or sometimes it's been this way, too, where I'm having that conversation, and all of a sudden, you just hear that voice. And you're like, do I turn around? Or maybe I turn around this way so they don't see me, right? Has anybody ever had that before? You know, a life sucker walks into the room, and you're like, how am I supposed to navigate this? Maybe they won't talk to me. Maybe I can keep going my own way. Maybe I can get out of here, whatever, da 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 you name it. I've had those moments before in my life, just being real with you, right? You know, when I was youth pastoring, and uh, years ago, it keeps getting further and further away, and I have more white hairs to prove it. Um, when I was youth pastoring, we used to have these, these students that we would call EGRs. And that stands for extra grace required. <laughs> Maybe those life suckers in your life are those EGRs where they have extra grace required. You know, maybe a little more patience too, right? We've all got those. And more often times than not, we, we don't look to spend time with those people. So you're, in life, you could either be a plus or a minus. You could be living a generous life, adding value, or you can be taking, taking it away. See, there are two kinds of people, people who lift and people who lean. You know, I stand here today because I can think of five people in my life when I was a teenager who came into my life, saw something, and spoke something into me and lifted me up into the person who God wanted me to be. I can also think about people in my life and certain friends who were no longer friends that weren't the people who lift, but the, they were the people who lean, and they were actually adding more burden and more weight See, what kind of a person are you? Who are you today? See, 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19 says this, Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to what? To share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasures as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. So as I've titled this message today, Giving is Living, what does that look like? What does that look like for you and I as we navigate this life to, to have a character of generosity, to be more and more like God? Giving is living when, here's the first one, we live on the other side of yes. I want you to tell your neighbor, give him a little elbow shrug, say yes, come on. See, we live on the other side of yes. Out of Philippians 4, 8 through 9, it says this, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, on what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And then it says, Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me. Our success in life will be greatly determined by how we think. And guess what? The choice is yours. For some of us, we, we struggle with living on the other side of yes. For some of us, we, we have a hard time saying yes. I used to think I was pretty good at saying yes until I had kids. And now I've got Makai who is almost... Right, just a couple months away from being two, oh my goodness gracious, who I have said no to so many times because he is more active than his brother and his sister combined. I've even thought about trying to learn no in like 16 other languages so, just so they don't get worn out with saying no all the time. But there is something amazing that happens when you actually begin to live your life by saying yes, by actually doing something, by being generous. 
See, giving is living when we live on the other side of yes. But some of us, we have a hard time. Instead of seeing the possibilities, what do we do? We see the problem. Instead of seeing the opportunities, for a lo- sometimes we end up focusing more on the difficulties. It's a whole lot harder to get moving and to live a generous life and to do what God is calling us to do now if we're looking at things from the wrong perspective, if we're not flowing out of a generous heart, if we're not flowing out of generosity, if, if we don't understand how giving is really living. See, I've heard this phrase that opportunities sometimes are lost, right? Have you ever heard that, like where people will talk about like, oh, it was a lost opportunity, a missed opportunity? I'm beginning to realize more and more, and, and even as I look back on my life, I, I can think about some of the opportunities that I felt like I lost. Some of the moments that I felt like I missed, right? But as I get older, as I kind of go through certain things, I realize, you know what? Opportunities are rarely actually lost. Somebody else just finds it. I want you to hear that. Opportunities are rarely lost. Somebody else finds it. Live your life in such a way that will tell others yes. Maybe you might say, well, Pete, I, you know, this is, this is, you guys have been going through this now series. This is week three, right? Like, you're kind of, you know, you, you've heard about all of it. You've heard that now is a two-year thing for our church as we, we, we join in for this generosity initiative to help support with, our, with the cost of remodeling a building and then the future vision and da-da-da-da-da. And, and some of you may be thinking, well, it's all about the money. And I can tell you today, honestly, guess what? It is not about the money. I mean, I, I pray that you would hear our heart as a staff, even from our pastor this past two weeks, like, it is not about the money. It is never about the money. It is more than just the money. It's it's something deeper. It's something more meaningful. It's something more precious. Maybe you might even find yourself saying, you know what, people, I just don't give it all. Well, that's great. You may be saying, I I haven't tithed. I don't even know what it is. Like, that's okay. Because the heart behind all of this is that for us to understand it as a culture, as a value of who we are as Mesa Church is that we are a generous church. That we are a church that knows that giving is really living. And that because of our generous nature, we know that when we give, that when we surrender, we say, God, it's yours and he does the work. And so maybe you find yourself, you, maybe you haven't tithed. That's okay. You want to know what our heart is? We want a 100% participation. We want 100% participation. Why? Not not because of what you can do for us, because it has nothing to do with that at all. I stand here as a person today who who is exercising and learning what it truly means to give so that I can live. And because of that, I see what God is doing in my life. And I, I want nothing else more than for you to experience God's goodness in your life because you're doing what he's designed for you to do. Come on. It's not about the finances. So maybe you say, you know what, well, I haven't given. I don't know. That's okay. You can pray about it. You can talk about it. You can figure out all these different things. You know, we've given you guys some resources. We've got this, which explains all of the stuff for now. And then one of the things that we're also going to be doing here on November 7th, we're going to be gathering at Bill Barber Park because the hotel isn't available. And we're going to be gathering at Bill Barber Park for one service outside at 10 a.m., and we're going to come together, and we're going to bring our offering. We're going to bring our hearts. We're going to bring our lives, and we're going to say, you know what, God? I, I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to commit. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I feel you leading. You know, some of us, we, we look at things like this, or some of us, we think about the money, and, and we automatically then determine, well, this is, this is just what I'm going to do. Well, can I encourage you, don't just fill in the number, don't just put a number down, don't just say, well, this is what I'm just going to do just one time and, and not put any thought to it, and then say, okay, God, I did my part, you bless it, do the rest. Can we put ourselves in a, in a posture where we say, you know what, God, I am going to trust you, right, we've talked about that already, and now we're going to say, God, I want to live a generous life because I know that is who you are. 
That is God's character. That is what he has modeled through the entire word of God from Genesis to Revelation. It is his nature. It is his heart. That is how he designed us. He created us so that when he put us here, man, we didn't just... We had to be good stewards with what he gave us from the very get-go before we even knew who Jesus was. He's given us an assignment. He's given us an opportunity. For God so loved the world, he gave. That's what it's about. It's saying, God, I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to say, God, what is it that you are speaking? What is it that you are saying? What is it that you are placing in my heart, in my family, so that... I can then say, okay, God, as I trust you, I see. I may not understand. I may not know how it's all going to work out, but I see that you're doing a new thing. And the time is now. The time is now. See, living is giving when we live on the other side of yes. Living is giving when we continually sow seeds. See, a generous person is con constantly sowing seeds. Most people determine success by the harvest that is gained. Generous people determine success by sowing seed. By loving, by serving, by giving, by adding value, right? We've talked about it, by speaking life, by encouraging others. Maybe you could set a new habit today if you haven't already done something like this. But when you get to the end of your day, you get to the end of your evening, for those of you, maybe or if you work a night shift, you get to the end of your morning, <laughs> right? And you're getting ready to just lay down to get some rest. Evaluate every day by the seeds that you sow and not by the harvest that you reap. Amen. Evaluate every day by the seeds you sow, not by the harvest you reap. You see my life verse. The verse that, that sticks out to me that I have, I have committed to my own heart, that I want to live a life that is 100 times. And my life verse is out of Matthew 13, verse 23, and it says this. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. That's my heart. That God, whatever I put my hands to and with every breath that I take, God, may I live my life generously that you would bring a hundred times from it. See, the reality is the harvest will always come. The harvest is always going to come. But if you don't sow any seeds, how can you expect to receive a harvest? See, for me personally, I don't sow seed in order so I can get something back. I'm not sowing seed or doing things in life so that I can get someone's favor. See, we have to live a generous life, period. Giving wasn't just God's idea. It was an example of his character. It's an example of who he is. And if you think about, you think about it for a moment, right? So when we're talking about giving is living when we sow seeds. A lot of times, you know, we, we, we end up coming into our life, we, we take a life, our situations, we even take our prayers and how we communicate with God, and we're always just bringing a need, 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 right? We're always just bringing a need, like we've always got needs. Even if some of us won't admit it, like, hey, guess what? We're all needy in some way. <laughs> right? And then if you think about a farmer who goes to the field he knows all of his needs. He knows that, hey, I've got these suppliers that I need to give all of these crops for. I need da-da-da-da, and the list goes on and on. Does, he, does the farmer then go to the field and say, all right, field, here's all of my needs. Come on. Does he say, oh, like so-and-so is going to need me to harvest this, this many thousand pounds of grain. Come on, field. Do your work. <laughs> Nothing's happening. See, the soil is asking, it's requiring, it's telling you, bring the seed, not the need. 
So when we understand that giving is living, it's, it's actually all about providing the seed. It's all about spreading the faith. It's all about trusting God. It's all about taking, taking every situation that we have. You know, we've done these prayer cards, man, making every moment count. Saying, God, you are doing a new thing. Help me see it. Help me understand. And in whatever way possible, I'm going to just throw the seed out there wherever it lands. And when it lands on good soil, I'm praying it's 100 times. See, Luke 6, verse 38 says, give away your life. You'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with a bonus and a blessing. Come on. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. Most of us, Sad to say, most of us are so preoccupied with increasing our standard of living when God is just asking us to increase our standard of giving. I'm not asking you to understand. I'm just crying out to say, you know, this is what God is asking us to do. He's wanting us to say yes. See, we've got lots of people. We know lots of people who are well-educated way beyond their years. But we also know lots of people who are well-educated way beyond their level of obedience. I don't want to just be known as a person who knew what to do. I want to be known as a person who, who obeyed, who trusted God and followed through. Do your giving while you're living so you're knowing where it's going. See, when we die, we can't take any of it with us. Last time I checked, right? When we die, we can't take anything. So why not live your life in such a way that do your giving while you're living so you know where it's going? See, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 9 and 10 says, They share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity where? In you. Giving is living. See, God wants to give seed to the sower. He doesn't want to give seed to the hoarder. It's not about the amount, but it's always been what about the heart? It's always been about our posture. So if we understand that giving is living when we live on the other side of yes, if we understand that giving is living when we continually sow seeds, can we understand that giving is living when we are growing in our faith? Growing in our faith. Our growth is not going to come from getting a blessing, although receiving blessings, receiving gifts, being served, being loved, being taken care of, being thought of, all of those things are amazing and they're wonderful, but they ha- and they have their place. But the last time I checked, I didn't grow. (laughs) I didn't get challenged. I didn't get stretched when I always had someone constantly just giving to me. I had to do it myself. I had to exercise it myself. See, Psalm 112 verse 5 says, Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Good will come to those who are generous. See, generosity, right? Just like what I said, it's not about the money. It's about showing other people you care. It's about putting other people first. It's about loving other people above yourself. Can our generosity give someone hope for tomorrow? Can our generosity give someone hope for tomorrow? Because generosity, it's not about you, but it's about what God wants to do through you. See, what would happen in Mesa Church? What would happen in Orange County? What would happen in our, in our country? What would happen in our world? And I know it sounds simple to say, but the reality is so stark, like so, oh my gosh, like what would happen if we truly grasped onto God's character about giving? See, we have an opportunity here on uh, November uh, 14th 
We will not be gathering here at the Doubletree, so you can mark your calendars on that. But on November 14th, right, we've already talked about it just a little, we're going to be doing a serve day, a first official serve day as Mesa Church. And so instead of gathering here at the Doubletree, we're going to be meeting up at the 17660 Cowan property where our building is. We'll be meeting at 9 o'clock, and then from 9 to 12, we're going to be doing service projects and loving our community. Come on, somebody. Amen. Some of the things that we're going to do, one of them, we're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to pray for our surrounding area. There's lots of businesses, office complexes, workspaces, co- uh, you know, all of those different things. We're going to pray. We're going to pray around the building. We're going to walk around. Another thing that we're going to do, we're going to actually get in, con- we're getting in contact with an elementary school who is pouring into kids of, our, of this generation, into this community. And we're going to say, you know what? We as a church want to come alongside you to love and serve with you. To be generous as you're loving these kids, as you're teaching them, as you're helping these kids learn and discover their purpose. Man, we as a church are going to come alongside and say, what is it that you need that we can be the extra hands and feet to help? We're going to be loving on our firefighters. We're going to be doing some different things there. We're going to be canvassing the neighborhoods. We're going to order a few thousand different handouts, and we're going to go ahead and flood the neighboring communities that are about a mile and a half from our property. Because we're going to tell them, hey, there's a light in this area named Mesa Church. And there's a place for you at the table. There's going to be several different things. So I want to encourage you guys. You can go to mesa.church slash events. Check it out. Sign up. It's going to be a great opportunity for you and for the whole family, for kids. We're planning it all out. See, generosity. We're going to grow in our faith. And then it says this in Psalm 112, verse 6. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. See, when you die, how will people remember you? As I was writing this message and I was thinking about it, because I I know our staff, and I know you guys are too, we are so excited about the building. But then I had this thought yesterday that as I was thinking about it, when we're no longer in this hotel, when we're no longer at the Double Tree here in Santa Ana, how will people remember who we are? Let that sink for a moment. When we are no longer in this hotel and turning this place into a house of God every single week in and week out, how will they remember who we are? Giving is living. Caring, serving, loving. See, giving is living when we attract people to God. And I'm almost finished. See, Matthew 5, verse 14, it says, Be generous with your lives by opening up to others. You'll prompt people to open up with God. Whew, come on. Be generous with your lives. Open up to others. When you open up, you'll prompt others to open up to God. There are several things in my life, and sometimes God asks me, like, I I look at things in my life, I look at my resources, I look at my time, I look at my giftings and all these different things, and then there are certain moments in time where I come face to face with wanting to hold on to certain things and to not let go. And then God always asks me, why? And the majority of the time, it's because I'm human and I'm selfish, and I don't want to. But how can we live in such a way that we attract people to God? See, people will want to know about your God when you love people. They will want to know about your God when you serve people. They'll want to know about your God when you help others win. But if you're into it for yourself, and maybe your body language doesn't show it, people don't want to know about your God, right? And most likely, they don't even want to know about you. How can we live our lives in such a way where we attract people to God? Giving is living. When we receive more than we can ever imagine. We receive more than we can ever imagine. Proverbs 11, 24 through 25, it says, The world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. 
The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed, and those who help others are helped. See, every person passing through life will either leave something and take something. Can we leave more than we take? See, as pastors, I've been in ministry, you know, for a few years, and as pastors, I understand that part of our responsibility is to help walk with people through their spiritual journey, is to, take, to, to help, navi- help them navigate their spiritual journey just like I'm navigating mine, you know, and so, right, so as pastors, we're, we're, we're called to not do the work of the ministry, but we're called to equip, we're called to help empower to encourage, to, to speak things as though they're not, right? So to speak all of those things, to speak into existence, to, to call out in faith. You know, so sometimes, we've, so sometimes we've got to navigate things. Oh, man, we're going through a tough time, man. Let's really focus on joy. Let's focus on what the Word of God says. Man, we're living in hard times. We kind of feel like we're stuck in the middle, right? Let's focus on what it means, how we as the people of God can thrive while being in the middle, It's all about community. It's all about experiencing God's goodness. Why? So that you and I can begin to allow God to flow in this space, begin to flow in our lives, making himself known through our generosity. And that's what this NOW initiative is about. Helping us to understand that giving is living. Giving is living when we live out our God-given identity. See, your gift, my gift, it's not ours for our own, but it's for God. Our life is for God. If I can have the worship team come up, it's for God. See, God didn't call us to step out in faith. He didn't call us to step out in faith or to be generous just so that you and I can be liked. Catch that. He didn't call us to step out so that you and I would be liked. He called us to be generous so that we would be like him. So that we would be like him. We have to live out our God-given identity. See in Matthew 5 verse 48. I'm getting ready to close. This is what Jesus says here in the gospels. He says in a word what I'm saying is. Grow up. Your kingdom subjects now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others the way God lives toward you. See, can we stand in this place today as we wrap up? Mesa. May we be known as people who really learned and experienced life knowing that giving is really the key to living. That God is asking us to respond with a yes, to trust him, to open our eyes, to see that he is doing a new thing, and to respond with a yes that says, God, I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of it. See, Mesa, this opportunity we find ourselves in, this moment that we find ourselves in, it's a God moment. It's a God moment of God wanting to get into our lives, to wreck our space, to help us to understand that maybe there are certain things that we can be more like him on. So Jesus, we ask right now in this moment, God, that you would help us, that you would lead us, God, because you've called us to be generous. You've called us each by name. You've drawn us to this place in this moment so that we can be more like you. Lord, you are a good God. You are a gracious God. 
And so, Lord, we will trust you. We will give ourselves to you. God, even as we prepare and ramp up for our commitment service on November 7th, God, continue to do a work and speak to us and how we can live our best days ahead. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, and it's in your precious name we pray. And everyone said...